Hello everybody, welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is February 9th, 2017. And back in mid-December 2016, I received some footage from a gentleman over in France, Bordeaux, France. And the video footage was what looked to be either a very large meteor falling out of the sky or possibly a Planet X flyby. And fellow researcher Dave Dobbs has been doing research on the Nemesis solar system, Nibiru, and Planet X for quite some time now. And he has generated models and also has documented these flybys for quite some time. And myself and Steve Olson were analyzing this footage and we wanted to get the information over to Dave for him to analyze it and place it into his calculations. Well, he made a video about the information that me and Steve put together. However, I'm just now running across his commentary and his findings on the video footage that was captured in Bordeaux, France on or about, I think it was December 17th, 2016. So here is part of Dave's video, and he'll be talking about his calculations, his analysis. So please listen very carefully. So hi there, Dave Dobbs here. It's the 29th, 29th of December, 2016, nearly 2017. And um, I thought I'd make a video today to follow up on something that um, Steve Olson brought up on his channel and is um, on his newer WSO channel with um, Scott from the Nibiru channel. Well, let me just show you the little bit of footage. First of all, I zoomed in on it. And when I zoomed in on it, I basically almost choked on my coffee. And yeah. I, yep. I was like, wow, I cannot believe this because there's no other planet in our solar system that's going to produce you know this this uh, discharge of this these wings right and that brings up the um the other thing that you sent to me and you said hey steve we need to get a hold of dave dobbs so dave if you're watching you know i have tried to reach out to you a couple times but look at what happened this is from december 17th i believe right yeah a couple days ago in france well all right. There we go. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that this fits with Dave's um, Dave's uh, uh, analysis of this, and that's what we're going to try to get Dave on. And I'll have you on the show too, Scott, so you can ask him questions. But um, what do you think of this, man? Yeah, I mean, this was, uh, I got this from uh, one of my subscribers in France. What I'm, what I'm actually finding out is there is some censorship going on in France. Um, okay, so thank you for, um, first of all, Steve and uh, Scott, thank you for both inviting me in to um, comment on this. Excuse me, making uh, my own video. I'd love you to put it up with, um, with, your, with, with, with some of your stuff as well. Because it, it it very much follows on with with obviously this whole this whole research and and Steve, I've got to be honest with you. Um, this doesn't fit into my timeline. Um, it doesn't fit in, um, and it doesn't make sense um, with the current timeline. Um, and therefore. Um, we have to start making calculations as to what that is and you've seen me continuously bring up these um these twin tail um sort of flybys and you know in 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 the later videos when i first brought them up i only really show short shots of it because you can imagine most of my most of my subscribers and people who are following what i'm saying have seen it so too many times i don't want to be taken through each very long sighting and that's the characteristic of these sightings is that they occur for a very long time they stay they stay in a very uh, they, they, they sometimes move backwards they sometimes move sideways that they, they 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 sometimes um they, they stay in the sky far longer than a than a jet chemtrail or comtrail um <clears throat> contrail whatever they call but um 
that the um, that this characteristic is uh, it's a Nibiru characteristic, except that Nibiru, by my maths, can't be there because we've already seen it. You know, we saw it go. We saw it heading back towards the, the sun direction on the twenty second of set, set on the twenty second of September. Um, it, it it's not making sense unless we start to consider there really is another um, twin-tailed object up there, and we've got a big problem here because you know as, as you said, Scott, there can't be there can't be another twin tail object but I've got um, two um, testimonies of um, two two video testimonies of of a of, of, of another um, of another flyby um, with two what look like Nibiru's <laughs> two twin tail objects um, going exactly the same direction running exactly parallel with each other um, Je uh, Jeff P brought Jeff P brought this up recently as well, and said, you know, what about these? What you know, it, 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 you know, we, we have these two, two two distinct sightings. So so we know there is another. We know there's several objects orbiting orbiting this dwarf planet. Um, several celestial bo bodies. I'm not too sure how many exactly. I've heard lots of different sort of accounts. But you know, I, I like to sit. I, I like to have documented testimony, and that's why that's why these flybys are so important to me because they're real flybys that are coming in from a, a variety of sources, and each one independent. I can't imagine all of these people coming out and getting together and saying, "Let's all post these independently." You know, I I, I found that timeline by you know I didn't have the exact two two hundred days, or maybe I had one two hundred day, you know, interval between two timelines, but. I had to basically work it out and then I had to spend literally probably the best part of really months digging through YouTube trying to find them out as I started working out the timeline. Uh, you know, I, I had to start finding those, those various flybys and sometimes I got the dates wrong and then we had to source, source out where, the, where, where, the, where, they, where and when they were originally posted because sometimes people post flybys of, of, of planets and they don't, um, they don't give a time, a time, a date, a place and they're so important when you post a video because you can just add so much confusion to the you can just water down the mix and just and throw confusion out so it, t it takes a not just finding a find a finding but actually um knowing that it's a legitimate you know that knowing that the time and the place um and the day are are legitimate and so so we've we we've got, we've got a problem with this date that You've seen all the other timelines that I've put together. They were on the 200-day timeline. Okay, and then we had Becky Lewis's footage, which was on the 28th of March, 2015. Now, I'd, be, I'd predicted that Nibiru, in previous videos, I'd predicted that Nibiru would pass Earth on the 22nd of December. And obviously I've talked about this, I'm not going to go too much, into too much detail on any, any of these, because obviously those who watch my channel know all about it, but obviously more people are coming on board with this all the time, so I have to kind of regurgitate everything as we're going along. To, and it's very important, that, that this, because this, this footage on the 28th of March 2015, I made a video literally a day before that saying we are coming to the 100 day point in this cycle, like a half point after, the, after that that sighting on the 22nd of December 2015 that I predicted would come in and then it came in you know at the time I thought oh what had I done but then it passed we had two corroborating testimonies saying it passed so when I put that together I realized that at that point when we when we you know I didn't know we were going to see it then I just I was understanding that this would be the half point in the cycle but then we had this this footage from Becky Lewis, and we suddenly saw it, and she she made it the day after. And when she made it, she was like, "Oh my God, Dave Dobbs! He'd said that we were at this exactly at the half point." So she posted the video. It's an incredible piece of footage. Um, and then we realised that I, I'd actually in in my earlier visit of videos, I'd said that the 
you know, I predicted the next, the next, the, the next part, the next passage, all the next passages, you know, it was around about the 23rd of June, I think, I can't remember exactly, and then it was going to be the 15th, uh, the 25th of, it was going to be the 25th of January, 2017, minus, and I'd minus 50 days from that cycle, because up until that Becky Lewis footage on the 28th of March, the 100 day point, half half point in the cycle. I'd never imagined that it was at, if you like, a, a right angle. It was being seen at a right angle to the sun from our, from our perspective each time. So because of that, I deducted exactly 50 days from the 25th of January 2017. I had no other choice because we'd only had ever had one cycle, one, one point in the cycle up until then as it had gone over the sun. So then my only logical conclusion was to deduct 50 days to bring it to a quarter cycle. The only point it could, if it was going to affect Earth, the closest point would be 50 days before the highest, furthest point away from the sun in the cycle. Except that you'd have to understand this whole system for this to happen would have been having to leave the sun and be on its ex exit trajectory. Traje trajectory. Excuse me. So <clears throat> when we saw this. 100 day point it was just like oh my god that means that it's finally moved away from the sun it's close it, it's it, it's sort of closest point to the sun which means we're seeing both sides of it and but then we then we knew it was beginning absolutely without any doubt it was not still going round it was actually leaving the sun so we knew it it was on its way out it was just that where was the exit point was it going to come straight over the sun and keep going, sort of in an arc, or was it going to come right, right, but right back round and come back and come back from whence it came, the same sort of direction? You know, I have no idea. I, you know, we we can all have our different theories and that sort of stuff, but you know, we've got to understand that obviously there's higher bodies, higher higher intelligence in our own world that understands more about this than I do. That is not telling us. And because maybe it doesn't want us to, to be too scared. Maybe it just doesn't know how to deal with it. Maybe it just doesn't really know which side of the fence it's on in all of this. That it's so confused by all the data, it just doesn't know. It's piggy in the middle of just too much that it hasn't actually got the, any answers right now. It's just how to deal with the most impossible thing to even believe. And when you do see it, you just can't believe it. It's just overwhelming. And so we come to this... We come to this footage that you, you that you've sent me, um, Scott, um, via or you know Scott and Steve, you know you've you've sent me this footage. Like I say, it doesn't really fit in, or maybe it does, and 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 the fifty day thing is correct. And but if that's the case, that's not making any sense to me because I'm not seeing. You can see just by looking at that footage of the twin tail. So that was on December the um, December the seventeenth. That twin tail, and then we have this footage after on the twentieth. That um, the uh, I'm assuming it's on the twentieth, the morning of the twentieth. I'm assuming, where you have this red orb and this what looks like a twin tail again. So we have these two corroborating testimonies of two twin tails. One on the twenty eighth of March, two thousand and 15 and one on the 28th of February 2013 and what's interesting here is that they're they're both on the same day so I, I know that doesn't seem significant in any real way because there's such a big gap between the two but sometimes the most simplest things are staring us in the face and I, I didn't notice this until after, after you know, so, you know, very much in this practice, the reason I work with these twin tails is because there's so much data here, there's so much mind-blowing data that's coming in, just like the wave that's coming in at the moment and all these kind of like, uh, all, the, all this, this, this helium that's coming in and, and this, 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 this atomic evidence of, of a collapse dwarf, dwarf planet, you know, something that's gone from the process of fusing from fusing hydrogen into into helium and then it's it, it's it's collapsing down more from there i guess into more denser material so it's a very very old grandfather sun 
and I and and uh, maybe that's why it has a, a, a slightly it's it's abundant with a different type of um, helium apparently, but you know I, I, I'm I'm no kind of like uh, I'm no chemist or or, or or anything like that really. You know I have my own little my own little air. More of a, I'm a writer, you know, but so I research information and there's lots of information about this and and I'd really advise anyone who's trying to understand this to um, to, re to to because there's a lot of great minds looking in looking into this. BP Earthwatch is just you know his his channel absolutely um, um, that absolutely absolutely amazing really amazing research um whether he's right you know i don't think he's trying to be right i think he's just trying to gather as much information as possible and open our heads to sort of like trying to understand this a bit better and um and so we're this is new to all of us you know most of us can't believe what's happening at the moment um what to say about it but anyway we've got two corroborating testimonies here the other one like I say on the 28th of of March 2001 on the 28th of March 2015 and one on the 28th of February 2013 and so I started running calculations with all of these dates because there's some other dates that are not not fitting in and I started realizing that I started playing with this month cycle so then we take the sighting on the 22nd of September 2016 this didn't fit quite with the timeline either this was you know I'd expect the timeline just to go over the DAC date calculator here I'd expect that I'd, I was expecting on my timeline around about the 17th of October as the half the half point cycle and the 22nd of September 2016 um, of that of that of that flyby posted um, posted here um, that kind of that threw a spanner in the works for me that really did as well because we, you know, we have to follow. If if we really find a pattern, and we've got enough, um, we've got enough flybys to actually to to make this work. So we're not just kind of like we're not just playing with the numbers. We've got a, a, a we've got like we've got seven, eight, nine, whatever it is, flybys. You know, all of and really very close to two hundred days apart, and um, and that's just too much data to ignore. So. And we've got, like I say, we've got two two sightings with two twin tail objects, both in both pictures. They're both parallel, and they and they're a couple of years apart. So I'm starting to put it together that we've got a another object. If if I put all those dates into a calculator, into a date calculator. Okay, so. So that means we've got two corroborating um, testimonies of two twin tail objects, and we've worked out one of them. We've worked out the one that has the 200 day timeline, and um, that's really what I've been focusing on. We have to focus on that because that's the data that's really coming in that we're seeing that gives us, it's the only thing I can see that's going to give us any real clue as to where this thing is exactly and when it most affects us by absolute fundamental flybys it's so important it, you, you, you can see what rests on, 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 on knowing the exact time that this most, most affects us and as the data comes in we can start building more of an understanding you know so we're getting these various shots basically coming in that are are basically they're that they're only occurring when we're very close to nemesis of something else other objects orbiting other twin tailed objects orbiting um nemesis it's 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 all just so impossible to believe when I start putting the data together it's a little bit hit and miss but it seems that this thing has literally a 30 day thereabouts cycle 
give or take it's difficult to tell because you you, know, you never see it when it's completely in line you only see it when it's quite when after the sun has set so you're not getting you you're, you're, you're we're seeing it at various points in its cycle but it's all just so unbelievably impossible to believe you know you're bringing another thing to try and make sense of these of all these different sightings but actually um the, the 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 kind of mass of this is it it kind of it kind of all falls on the on the 25th of it, in my mind it, it, it it's it's confusing the data but we're finding patterns where we can start filling in the gaps and I'm still limited you know you know that we've we've had this this shot that I took on the 2nd of December and now Dil Dil Martin um has um put up and put up a um a shot on the um that was filmed on the 25th which I believe is the same thing we watched this object I saw this object in the in the northern hemisphere and that was the picture I I I I I I I caught on the 2nd of December this year and it's just reappearing now um, to me it's the same thing it's going round and round and so it's really it's really confusing all our heads now um, that shot on the 22nd of September um, this year um, this shot looks very similar to the shot that you caught on the 17th of uh, December or you're showing on the 17th of December Scott it's it's looking like this was the first time that we've ever been really that close to that second object which gives you an idea of how close we are to Nemesis right now we're, we're literally you know if, like I say if Nemesis was going to affect us it would be affecting us massively now and I'm of a mind something has to be protecting us now well I'm told you know the space I go to when I do my process um, it, 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 I'm told that we're being very protected now, and and so we are now in a uh, we're we're in a place where only time will tell. But by my maths, we should be having, you know, the object that you caught. Um, well, I believe BP um, um, Sky, um, BP Earthwatch. Uh, post it originally, and you posted it in uh, uh, on on your channel, Steve. Um, this shot here, uh, I believe you posted it on the twenty second of December, Steve. I mean, that's where I'm expecting the bearer to be right now, right there, with a tail trailing behind it, and it reflects light. And the reason it reflects light is as as impossible to believe as as. Nibura itself because I'm suggesting there's a massive shield up there which is collecting all this solar energy and is utilizing this energy to create a shield that's protecting us a, um, to divert gravitational energy to so so we don't get sucked in by this um, this massive giant um, celestial body and also to somehow use some kind of screen projection which is blinding us from so much but we're just start, it's getting very close to us now because all of this system is getting very close to us now and so it reflects light back at this thing coming towards us that's why we can see it, it even the fact that we can see it have you ever seen you know it, there's so much stuff that is happening now which is quite beyond belief so I, i'm that's where i'm imagining it, it, it is at the moment it's it's very it's, it's appearing very close to the sun it's actually all all occurring between Earth and the Sun, but it's appearing above the Sun because it's it's cutting across the line of the Sun as we see it, and that's what I believe it's going to do, and it's going to get. You know, my timeline may be incorrect, but I'm really I'm just trying to run it on the basic mass of all the all, all the all the other sightings, so we can be logical and sensible and number crunch it, but. You know, like I say, I was wrong last year. You know, okay, I predicted the predicted the timeline, but I thought it was going to be a lot closer. And you know, there's there's a lot of um, respectable people in the sort of Nibiru field that think that, like I say, that this thing is inbound and it's beyond Earth at the moment and it's heading in. 
and um, and I just haven't worked out a model for that in in, in all the sightings, especially all the sightings that Chris Potter put up in the, in the early days, and and yourself, Steve, and um, of so many sightings close to the close to the sun. You know, Chris Potter just showed me a, a endless images, endless amazing images, um, and he was as mesmerised by, by by them as as we all were. They were just mind blowing. They were just mind blowing. And so I have to believe that this thing has been in between, to, close to the sun for the last for the several years. Um, I can't get around that, and that now we're finally seeing this thing popping into our night sky, and and. You, you remember that the the incredible footage of Matthew Rogers, I think it was on the fifteenth of August. Um, if it's not up at the date, I'll correct. But that was the that was about the time that I was expecting this whole system to be seen in the night sky, but not actually right in our night sky. Just when the sun sets, after the sun sets, we get that little passage like we do with Venus. It never goes over us. Um, we only see it when it when we're, we we see it in the night sky way before it, it comes into transit. We see it as it approaches us and it becomes a, a, a kind of like evening star. And then we see it as it leaves, it goes underneath Earth, doesn't go over the top into a night sky. And we see it as it as it uh, uh, quite a considerable part of time after it's left its transit and it and it's heading uh, heading out before it when it becomes our morning star. Um, hopefully, I might have those the wrong way around, but uh, the, but um, I think you get get my gist. And I I knew that as we approached the Nemesis system, we would get that shot. I was calculating that we would get that shot because it hadn't passed. We hadn't had a pass uh, 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 the close passage in June, July. Um, you know, I knew that that was the next point in the hundred day in the two hundred day cycle in the full cycle point, but I didn't know if that was the exit if that was the exit location or whether um, Nemesis was going all the way around the sun and back out for like I say from whence it came so there's been so much unknown data we can just calculate it but with all the sightings especially with the helium now and everything else like that how much data do you need all the earthquakes the volcanoes the sinkholes the whole shaboodle is absolutely happening now and Dave is absolutely correct everything is occurring now as I have said before the earthquake activity is increasing, volcanic activity is increasing, and as you can clearly see, the weather patterns around the world are absolutely, completely erratic and out of control. But we will continue to research and try to find the truth. So please, by all means, subscribe to the Nibiru channel, make sure your notifications are set, and please, Stay tuned. We will have more information. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce one of our new affiliate sponsors, Food for Liberty. And they provide the highest quality long-term food storage, water purification, and survival prepper supplies. All foods have a 25-year shelf life, certified non-GMO ingredients, and also a gluten-free option. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a very smart idea to have at least a 30-day supply of food and water in the case of any emergency. So there will be a link provided in the description box under this video for Food for Liberty. I'd like to thank all of our Nibiru watchers. You guys do a fantastic job. Would also like to thank you for your loyal subscribership. You can continue to email your photographs and your video to NibiruPlanetX2016 at gmail.com. And don't forget to share our videos with your friends and family members on Facebook. And subscribe to the Nibiru channel for all of our current updates. And like I always say, keep an eye in the sky.